firstly, the paper that I'm using here is uh, um, Sanders Waterford paper. It's a 100% rag content paper, uh, 300 grams per square meter or 140 pounds. And the surface texture of it is uh, what is known as knot or cold pressed. So it's a sort of medium. It's, it's not totally smooth, but it's not completely rough. Uh, and it's what I tend to paint on more often than not uh, for this one. So, but the, the important bit about that is that the quality of the paper uh, being cotton uh, is absorbent and uh, is, it works well with watercolor. It's, it's not critical that you use the type of paper, but uh, it, it is quite helpful when you're doing watercolor. Secondly, the, the paints that I've got here, well, I will talk about the various colors that I'm using and, and I won't go through the whole range of them because they are actually shown on the Eventbrite page that Lois had put out. Uh, but but the, the main thing I want to say about them is that they are all artist quality or professional quality as opposed to student quality. So, so I would always recommend if you can get fewer colors, but get them better quality if that's possible. The only one that's not a translucent paint is this uh, white designer's gouache um, here. Um, I suppose Chinese white is a, not a dissimilar thing. Uh, whether I will be using this or not, I, I'm not quite sure in this painting, so I'll just put it off to one side. And uh, these paints I use here are all from tubes. I squeeze them into this palette um, that uh, I've been using for a long time and replenish them by squeezing more paint in. So the brushes that I think I will be using today are um, a, a large, uh, fairly large mop brush. This is squirrel uh, hair. Um, but, but last week I used, for instance, that brush, which is imitation squirrel, slightly different shape, but I, I would be just as happy with either one of them. Uh, they're really great. The point about these is they will hold a lot of water and they will also go to quite a fine point as well. So the other brush that I'll be using quite a lot in this one, I suspect, is this is also a mop brush. It's a squirrel hair, this one. All it is is just smaller. It will hold lots of water and it will take itself to a fine point. And then talking about fine points, these two brushes, uh, this rigger brush here, uh, which, which uh, is great for making fine lines and more. May maybe I'll show you that as the, the session progresses. And then lastly, this dagger brush or sword brush is, is another one where you can get, it holds a lot of water. This, this is squirrel, but you, you could get an imitation squirrel. Um, it holds a lot of water, uh, but it also goes to a very fine point. And the thing I like about this brush is that it's crazy. You, you know, get, you, you, and I'm going to be using this for, uh, particularly the foliage um, in these foot trees in the foreground a lot. So those are my, that's my paper. Those are my paints. This is, those are my brushes that I'll be using. Uh, I'm going to do a bit of drawing now. Uh, and I've got a 4B pencil, but a soft pencil anyway. And um, lastly, uh, a, a, a brief word about the, the method that I'll be using for this tutorial is, is that I will break the tutorial into four steps. Uh, you, you could call it five, but I sort of amalgamated the first two. And the, the first step is the composition and primarily the drawing, the marks you might make by way of a drawing. The second step is uh, a wash step, then uh, the third step is more colors and shadows and, um, and so forth. And then lastly is the details or the um, accents that you might put in the, just, just to tie and bring everything together. But I'll speak about each of these as I go through them. So uh, let's turn attention to the photograph, the source photograph that I've got here. And, and everything that I'm saying from now is, is kind of the first 
step leading up to and including the drawing. But, but what caught my attention about this um, is the, uh, uh, the, the very bright light building here, which is framed within these trees that you see here. This is uh, a convent uh, where pretty well every Thursday we go to, to do our painting outside. Uh, it, it comes uh, after uh, two relatively frenetic days, one, one in the market of Vivisano and the other on a excursion, the, which, which is usually either to the uh, city of Lucca or the Cinque Terre, one, one or many of the um, seaside towns that uh, line um, the fishing ports that line the, the sea. Um, so th the thing about Thursday is that it's very quiet. This is a no longer in use monastery, although it's called a convent, it's a, it's a, it's a monastery. And um, it, it, it is the most extraordinary day of calm and quietness. And I think as well as seeing this white wall framed by these trees here, I, I, I just, I'm very much reminded of a sense of quietness uh, about this. And in this particular instance, um, I took this photograph last year, in fact, when I was uh, at the watermill, in, uh, I was just leaving at the end, going up a, a, a little windy track uh, that, that leads um, out of um, the grounds of the convent, looking back down, and uh, and and, and I, I was just taken this, and the photograph does does it justice. I, I just felt well, that's that that sums up the quietness of the whole place. Um, so the the other thing that uh, is I'm drawn to for this painting, this this particular subject, is the possibility of creating uh, sunshine, light, and dark shade, and the two of them playing each other off, uh, I, I, I think could make this quite a, a vibrant sort, sort of painting. Um, and uh, I, I think, uh, lastly, uh, as you'll see, uh, I've decided to uh, put a figure into this composition, this photograph, source picture here. Uh, I, I, I just felt the figure could be partaking in the quietness as, as well. So um, when it comes to you doing your work and your painting, um, please work along with me and I will give you hopefully plenty of time to catch up in between the steps. Um, uh, so that you don't feel that you're particularly rushed. And the other thing I'd like to say is that you don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. I, I've, I will take out and change certain aspects of this scene. Uh, for instance, I'm probably not going to, I'm, 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 going, I'm going to basically move in a little bit uh, to the view. Um, and I'm, I'm not going to deal with what's going around the back of the building here and the, and the various other little details that that I may or may not put in. I think the main thing is that I'm I'm going to change my perspective a little bit on this. So let me say a word about this perspective. In fact, I want to say a word about two types of perspective. The first is what is normally known as atmospheric perspective. And that is where your things are getting uh, uh, fainter and fainter uh, as they go away from you. You don't see the detail uh, increasingly as things go away from you. You tend to see things becoming uh, generally blue. The, the, the green mountains that you're standing on, the ones that you're looking at far away are, are going to some kind of blue. And we can just see evidence of uh, distance uh, hills here. And uh, although there's lots of trees in the way, um, that, that there is that sort of blueness and the distance, and that's known as atmospheric perspective. And, and when you're doing your paintings, you, you can put in 
as much or as little of that as you wish, depending on how your painting develops and how you wish it to go. The other kind of uh, perspective is, um, is what's known as linear perspective. And, and here I'm, I'm going to talk about my slight change in, in perspective. I always think it's a really good idea as an artist to understand where your eye level is. Wherever you are, sitting, standing, high up, low down, whatever it is, uh, it, wherever your eyes are, if you imagine you can throw out a laser light that runs parallel, that is your eye level. So I stood up on this hill here and I looked down and photographed this. And I reckon that my eye level, if I could put this pencil here, was just above the roof that you can see of, of the main roof of that building. In other words, th that is Mike, those were Mike Wildridge's eyes, the sort of on that level there. And I go 360 degrees around me and that's my eye level. Now, why is that useful as an artist when drawing particularly things like buildings? And, and it, very briefly, it, it is that anything that is in directly in front of you is going to be on that level, it's going to be horizontal to you. And anything that is vertical is going to be vertical. And we've got lots of evidence of that. And I'll come to it when I go into the drawing. But anything that's going away from you or coming towards you, anything that's uh, not dead in front of you or not vertical is, is going to follow this eye level of yours in that if it is below your eye level, everything will come up to that line of your eye level. And if it is above this line of your eye level, everything will come down to it like that. Well, as it happens, we've got nothing here above because we're, we're looking down and everything's trees and so forth. But take a look at what's happening with some of these lines. And this, this will really help you when you come to your drawing. Uh, see if I can show you. If, um, if, I, if we look at that line uh, of the guttering of, of the building, it is below our eye level. And so that means that it's going in that direction. Now, if I push this out of the way and come back here, can you see that that is moving up towards that line of your eye level? And if we go more extreme and come down here and say, take the bottom of these windows, which are all lined up, can you see that angle is getting greater? It's coming up to our line of our eye level. Th this is really useful, I find, as a sort of simple artist, just just knowing where your eye level is. And if, if in doubt, and sometimes there is great doubt, then, then just hold up something straight and see what's happening. Let's come on down to, say, this bit of roof here, just above the arches. That's the lowest. And, and that, can you see, is even more extreme. We've sort of gone like that. And if there was more, uh, this fence, I don't know how, how straight that fence is, it would continue going more and more like that. Um, so we don't need to worry about what's going on at the top coming down because th this particular view hasn't got that. Now, th th that's fine. And many of you will already have made a, a drawing of this, but I'm going to bring my eye level down a bit to about this guttering here which which i've already said is going up so i'm i'm going to actually make that guttering straight and and the reason i'm doing that is because i want to home in a little bit more to my figure that i'm putting here and although the focus of this painting jumps out at you as these white uh the walls here framed by all the green trees and dark trees. Um, I, I just want to come down and uh, 
and, and put the figure uh, uh, to be a little bit more intimate, that's all. But if you if you don't want to do that, that's absolutely fine with you. If you want to stay with, with how it is here, that's absolutely fine. Uh, so I'm, I'm just, it's only a marginal thing, but you'll see what happens when I make the drawing. Now, I know that I suggested that you arrive with a drawing done. And I don't know how many of you done so, have done so, but if, if you just give me a few moments to draw what I have just explained, and um, and and then we'll we'll consider that that first step done. So this line here, which is actually going up a little bit, I'm going to make more or less. I have made a few marks in here, and then I rubbed them out when I realised I wanted to demonstrate this. So I'm going to make that, which is pretty horizontal, uh, because I, it, um, of my eye level being there. I'm going to make that there. And then let's, I have made some marks. So let's, I'm going to draw up to there, although it's hidden in, in the picture. And then this is my eye level. This roof will actually be coming down a little bit. So I'm going to do that. Can you see, I've actually manufactured something above my eye level. And let's see how that works out with the rest of it. So I'll just make some drawings here. Um, this roof that I showed you earlier is still below my eye level, so it's going, it's going to be something like that. And um, and I'll deal with the arches and then I'll come back to the other things. Even the arches will follow that sort of rule of going up to it. They're all in a line, so if I draw a line like that. Remember, this is going up. It's going up to my my level here. If I draw a line like that, that gives me a chance of getting them roughly all in in um, line. And the reason I suggested you you do your drawing first is that the, it, these arches sometimes you end up rubbing doing rough rubbing out. So I have drawn them, but this arch here will come up to the top there. And these are verticals. Remember I said all verticals, whether they're, whatever they, drain pipes, edges of windows, they're, they're always going to be vertical, whatever you do. And this one is like that. And, and they're getting slightly bigger, the arches, because they're coming closer to you. And there's one here, uh, which you can hardly see because it's, but uh, uh, I'll, I'll just put it in and, and that, it's covered by a tree in the photograph, but there is one there. You can cover it by a tree if you want to. So there we are. We have some idea of those arches and we can see underneath a little bit like that. This sort of thing. And there is. Now, you, you can actually hide a lot of this by putting trees and things in the way but uh there there are my arches so let's look at one or two other details now um uh the is i've got a some sort of a chimney here that's e even the little lines of the chimney are following the rules of this linear perspective and let's put a let's put a um that line, that line, that they're just slightly coming down now because we've moved um, my eye level. And so there we are, we've got, so I'm just gonna stick another um, one here, I think. And um, just put a few windows in. Uh, we have got, got some windows, a drain, this is sort of uh, drain pipe here, and let's, let's put a window in there. Now these windows are, if I want to make it easy for myself, let's say they're all the same, I'll, I'll just draw a, a line slightly coming up, and this one even more slightly coming up, just, just to be a bit technical about it, and, and then I'm going to establish a few windows here, let's put a couple of windows in there with that. 
Another one there with a bigger gap. Another one there with a bigger gap. It's not exactly how they are, maybe, but uh, it's, uh, so they're, they're in my windows. Um, and they've got some mortars around them, so we'll worry about that. Then we've got a, uh, it, we've got some sort of hills here, um, something like that. And what else do I need to do? Let's let's create this surface that this person standing on here. Um, right, uh, it's actually goes downhill, but in order for the building to to stay up, it's got to. Um, as we come down to uh, say a, I think that's the other thing when you're doing a drawing, you need to have made some sort of decision as how much space you're going to give to the foreground and how much to the background. Maybe I should have mentioned that. So let's just say we're going to have a some sort of a patio area uh, here and this is, and then, and then there's a sort of little pathway that leads to a house here. Um, I got a, a tree coming up here, but I, let's not worry about that too much at the moment. And another one off there, maybe another one here. We can pop that in at the moment. Let's just see, do I want to do, I, I can draw the, um, paint the trees and I don't need to draw them in as such. There is um, guttering we've spoken about, which might be quite useful. Something else there. Right, I left anything out. The, the fencing, uh, the, the, the bushes. Well, let's, I'm gonna put the figure in now. No, where am I gonna put this? I've, I've deliberately come in a little bit on this figure. So if I draw this figure and see, see what you think. You can leave the figure out. You can put more than one figure in. Um, but I'm going to make, it's going to be standing here. And I, I, I'm going to make the top of this person's head about there and the bottom there. So let's have a look. Be careful not to make the head too big when you're drawing figures. Let's just see if this is going to fit in at all. It'd be leaning into a, an easel of some kind, not too big with the shoulders. I've got a feeling that's, I've got a feeling I, it's, that's the legs are going to be too long there. So I'm going to come down a bit. Make the figure slightly larger as well. I'm not sure whether it's a man or woman at the moment, but uh, see how it develops. So, figures are strangely a sort of um, triangular shape, and, and there's going to be um, maybe an easel of some kind there that they're working on. That should be all right. They look as if they're standing on that patio. We've got enough room now. So, I've, I've created my drawing, really. Um, and what I'd like to know is, do I need to wait for people to catch up or uh, are you all at that stage already? Maybe, maybe you could just put in the chat if you're ready, when I know there are lots of readies. Um, someone wants to know where they could find a photo of what they're painting. Well, <clears throat> I'll keep that here as much as I can until it gets in the way. There are a few readies here now. Okay, well, uh, I, again, I don't want to rush people. We're, we're doing all right. Um, it's a relatively simple painting, this one. So let's just, um, let's just come on down here. Um, there's some sort of a wall here, which might be, um, quite useful. And if you look at the photograph, this is, this is a sort of cloister in here. 
that you can walk in. Where are the steps on this one, Lois? Are they um, hidden? Uh, by the arch on the right. Are they the ones that are hidden? Yeah, yeah, yeah well, you, yes. You sort of got some steps to the terrace. Those aren't, those aren't the steps, are they? No, that one is hidden there. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. is, yeah. It is, yeah, it's yeah. a bit confusing, yeah. That's so, but uh, anyway, I'm not gonna put steps in, it's too difficult. I think uh, we'll, we'll put a bush in front of it or something like that. Um, I think I think my figure is about the right size, and hopefully we'll sort of stand there and add to the intimacy and the quietness uh, uh, of the scene that I was talking about earlier. Right. Um, anything else? Anything else? Um, no. So I'm going to give people a moment or two to just get themselves up to speed on that. And then we'll go in and make a wash. The wash is going to be fairly simple as well. So um, we, we'll speed through the next step fairly quickly, I think. Simple it might be, but really important it is, the wash. Uh, someone's asking, does the front of the house go to the right of the page or is there a corner there? Oh, well, if you look at the photograph, the one I've got here, uh, if I can point it out, uh, th this is the back of this house here, I'm, I'm pointing out. I'm kind of leaving that out, I think. Yeah. Um, actually, I might make my windows a little bit lower whilst people, are, I, th I think, with my pencil down. Shall I make my windows lower? There's a door here. Does it really matter? Yeah, we'll make them a bit lower. Bring them down here. It matters not. But uh, just following the linear rules of linear perspective still. So yes, you can see um, the back of the house. And if you wish to put that in, that is fine. Um, however you put it in that that's that's good we just picked that up here um i'm 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 going to kind of lose that a lot in the trees i think this this painting will benefit a great deal from you being able to hide all sorts of things by the trees in the foreground but we'll deal with that right at the end I'm done. This next stage, the wash stage, is uh, where you put in, uh, to simply you put in the lightest colors that you're going to have um, in your painting. Um, and given that this is going to be a painting about light and dark, it's really quite important you keep these colors as light as possible. You can always come in and make them darker later on. Uh, I'm going to put the sky in here and it's uh it's going to be a um the sky here has got lots of clouds in it i'm not going to put any clouds in this one um but i'm going to bring in some of the blueness of the sky uh, i know that i'm going to have quite a solid mass of greenery here in the foreground so it's going to cover up anything i put down this side of the sky it's not going to be quite so solid here. So um, what I do behind this area here, um, uh, what, what I want to be careful that I keep it quite light. So in making a, a statement about the blueness of the sky, it's this sort of area here that I'm going to make and I'm quite happy to wash out with water if necessary. Um, those areas to the side here. That, that's a, a convention really in watercolor painting that if you know you're going to be having to put something in front of something else, just be aware of how dark you make that thing in the background. So I'm going to put the sky in here. Uh, I'm going to put the warmth in uh, and I'll bring that sky down quite, quite far down here. Uh, and then I'm going to 
uh, with lots of water, this whole thing washed down. And then I'm going to put in some warmth in these buildings here. Uh, I'm going to bring in some uh, lightness uh, of the, the, the grass there and probably not do much more than that at the wash stage. Okay, so if I leave my... Uh, I'm going to have to move it out of the way outside because I'm doing the sky. Let's start with the sky first. I'm going to use the brush, my uh, large uh, mop brush, uh, and I'm going to use a lot of this water. Okay, as much, absolutely use as much as you like. Let it run in as much as you like. Uh, um, and I noticed in some of the paintings that have came through on cluster from my last session and also others that if if there's one comment I could make to a lot of people particularly at the early stages of a watercolor is use lots of water use more water than maybe you, you think you need to and don't worry about the colors sort of running in and so forth um, uh, that, that, that's just fine at this stage we can pull it all together later on so I, I, I'm going to use this brush lots of water here you can see this can't you yeah yeah, and uh, the color that I'll use um, for my blue. Well, I've got I've got three blues here: a cerulean, which is a sort of cooler, greener, um, e uh, more yellow blue, uh, and at the other end I've got ultramarine blue, which is I got more red in it, so it's a sort of a warmer, more purpley blue. And then in the middle is this cobalt blue. Um, I, I, I'm going to use cobalt uh, blue for this, um, but in some places it will have lots of water added to it. Uh, and I've got lots of water brought down from my water pot. I'll pick up the cobalt here. Uh, I'm painting flat here, mostly to aid you seeing what I'm doing. Normally I, I do all my paintings upright, um, more or less upright, and because that's where I prefer to work. But that, that's just fine. But um, it, I just found it technically too difficult to rig up my camera so that you could see me painting upright. And, and I think that that's fine. So I've got cobalt blue here and um, uh, I'll pop it down here. Uh, remember things dry uh, lighter in uh, watercolor than they do uh, that than, than you think they might be. So um, I, I bring that sort of down, down to here, um, but I want more color. So I'll, I'll pick up some more cobalt. I'll, I'll pop that in here. And remember I said I was going to leave these, these bits um, a, a little lighter. Uh, uh, now, if you want to put clouds in and so forth, that, that's fine, but I've, I've deliberately just run it down like this and I'm I'm bringing my sky down down to here because they're going to be covered with these atmospheric hills that I spoke about before and I'm going to be running uh, the greens in fact I'll actually yeah, do that Let's see how that goes just because I'm going to be putting some light green so I think that's probably uh, enough for my sky. It, it's painting itself. The nature of this rag content watercolor paper is that it, it's, um, if, you, if you use some other paper than that, you'd find that you put your paint down and it, um, it dries quite harshly with sharp edges. Here, because it's absorbent paper, it's sort of slowly, uh, slowly working its way around the paper. Uh, and in fact, when we finish this, the one thing we'll need to do, you'll need to do, is to dry, get bone dry what you're doing uh, before we move on. Now, I'm, I'm going to, the, so I, I mentioned the blues that I've got here. Now I want to put something warm down here. I'm conscious that this is uh, a white wall, but it's got the sunlight on it, and, and so have the roofs, and so have the, the, um, uh, the, uh, grass and everything. So uh, I'm, I'm going to use uh, this raw sienna. Okay, now 
I also have this color here, which is yellow ochre, which is really fairly similar. Um, I've only recently returned to using that, but I find this raw sienna is, uh, is slightly warmer. You could use yellow ochre if you like here. If you're gonna use a yellow color, re really be careful because you could end up with a very yellow painting. So I've gone for something like this. And I'm aware also that I want to keep this wall here. Um, quite quite white so I'm, I'm happy to paint my um raw sienna all over this where the the, the, the sun shines falling and what i think i'll do is i'll get a a rag and and just take where, where have you got these white walls? I'll, I'll just take that out of it a little bit. It's still going to have the yellow that I spoke of, but um, now I can maybe pop that raw sienna in a couple of other places. Let's just uh, put it back here a little bit, maybe. Um, and uh, yeah, so there's the sort of the patio here, the, the paving stones. Uh, there's a sort of road that runs here. And, um, and I've left this at the moment. Um, I've just left it um, white. I mean, I could put some colors in there, but I, I'm gonna do that later on. And then for the grass, Right, um, talk about yellows. I've got three yellows in my palette. The coolest uh, one is lemon yellow. So that's got the most amount of blue in it because it feels a bit green. Then at the other end is this new gamboge I've got here, which is got a lot of red in it. Um, and uh, it is, is almost moving towards a sort of Tuscany color. And then in between the two, I've got this color, which uh, it, I use Aurelian, but cadmium yellow uh, could be a good substitute for it. Um, I, I quite like Aurelian because it's, uh, it's, more, it's more transparent than cadmium, but cadmium yellow could be fine. So um, I want my grass to really zing out with the sun on it. Uh, and so I'm going to, um, I, I, I'm, I have a color here called sap green, which is a convenience green. It's this green, it's, it's pretty much a mixture of cobalt blue and cadmium yellow or aurelian, something like that. I, I, th that's still a bit too dull. So if I add some lemon, yellow to it. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm probably getting closer to that. Let's just something light like that here. Could be pretty useful. Okay, something quite light. So you can see the whole thing is quite light there. Um, that's all I'm going to do for my wash. We're um, into the next bit now th this will take a bit longer because there's there's more to do here um bringing more colors in and shadows and so forth i'm i'm trying to keep this painting uh, a fairly loose um as you'll see how i i be begin um uh, with the painting um but we're going we're going to now work uh, over the top of our um our washes. Now, in some places, we won't touch the wash at all. We, I, I'm, the, I'm not going to do anything to the sky. Um, I'm, uh, I, I'm. I'll be painting over other other things. I, I'll be painting over certain other things. But some bits of the wash you just just leave uh, as uh, as it is and work for it. So, as much as possible, I'll work 
this way across my painting, only just to avoid smudging it really. Although I, having having said that, I'll, I'll probably move around. So the first thing I want to do is, I've already said I'm not going to do anything to the sky. Uh, if when you're doing a watercolor painting, you know, if you wanted to to do things with sky, you, you could go on and do that. But I don't think I need to do that. And I think if I make this guy too complicated, too busy, um, it, it would take away from the busyness of the, that I'll probably be putting in with these trees. So I'm happy for it to be a backdrop as much as is possible. Um, I talk... where the sun's coming from, please, Mike. The sun is coming uh, it, from uh, where, where are we talking? It's coming from the other side. Uh, no, where, where are we? Um, the sun is coming from this side here. All right. I'm sorry, I should know that straight away. But can you see this little chimney, for instance, the shadow on that side? So the light is going, coming from roughly top left down, downwards. It's a uh, it's a sort of tea time light in this part of Italy. Uh, it, it's the light starts off around here and then it moves. Um, so it's going that way. So, so you've got your shadows on that side. You've got the shadows that side. You've got shadows just underneath the guttering. You've got bits of shadows. Even if you look at the, the windows, they're, they'll all give little clues as to the shadows. And of course, we've got a lot of trees chucking light down, which, which means that it's a good question you ask, where does the light come? So I, I'm, I'm going to start off by putting in my atmospheric perspective, hills in the background here. I'm going to ble bleed those in to, um, now there's a lot of, little bits of detail in the background here. Uh, I'm just going to treat that as a sort of uh, a, 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 a sort of flat color. If, if I show you the practice painting I did, this might give you an idea where I'm going. Here's the practice painting. Yeah, keep still. Um, I, and when I say I'm going to bleed the hills into what's going on in this middle distance, I, I've just taken all of that and seen it as a sort of orangey type color, which is quite good because it breaks up all the greens that we've got going on here. Okay, and 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 then the, I, I'm going to paint the trees, um, and then move on down from there. So let let's begin with that. And. Uh, I, I, what do I need? I'll stay with my big brush for a while. Yeah, no reason why not. Okay, the I talked about the distant hills being um, a, a kind of blue and, and so forth. So um, I, I'm going to bring them in here. If I wanted the hills to appear a little closer, or, or or more specifically, if I wanted the hills to appear further away, I could I could use the color that I'm using for the hills and then add some water. So, say I wanted these to be close hills and these to be far further away, then I, I would make this slightly stronger, then add some water and maybe tail them off. But a lot of them are going to be lost um, behind. Uh, a lot of them are going to be lost behind the um, uh, trees anyway. So is that the way around I want to do it? No, I'm going to start with the trees. Um, yeah, I'm going to start with these trees. And uh, so let's go for a smaller brush. Uh, these trees here, um, Treat as loosely as possible, and uh, I, 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 I'm going for my sap green. This is my convenience green. Convenience because I can just go to it, but I, I don't often use it just as it is. I, I add other things to it, uh, but if you haven't got it, you, you, you can mix up with other colours. So, so I want 
um, I, I want the trees to be um, the light areas, maybe not to be as light as this. Uh, so I'm, I'm using sap green. Uh, I'll I'll bring in a bit of lemon yellow. Let's just see what I get with that. That's too light for what I want. Let's let's just try adding. Now that that's just too bright. Um, right. Let's um, let's give it. I'm not going to use lemon yellow. All right. Let's let's go back to sap green and uh, bring in, um, say, this middle yellow. It's still quite bright uh, for, for what I want to do. So um, I want to tone it down a little bit. Uh, now, the color theory says that if you add a complementary color, you will gray it down. So, what, what I mean by that is that this green is made up of yellow and blue. And if you think about the primary colors, yellow, blue, and red, the color that is not in here, in theory, is red. So if we bring a little bit of red into this, it will gray down a little bit. It's, it's a little bit like your water pots, which is just full of all sorts of primary colors and it goes also gray and sludgy, doesn't it? So th this is just, it's too bright there. I, I don't want it as bright as that. It's just, just too bright. So I'm going to bring a little bit of red in and I'll, um, I'll use a little bit of, say, any red really, this light red. That automatically, that, that's grayed it down a little bit. Too much in a gold brown, so let's, let's mix up a little bit of that's quite brown isn't it because I've got red in my brush so let's just go back to this greens oh dear horrible old colors well not horrible but they're very tricky there so I'm going to bring a little bit of that in here and um, using a lot of water at this stage I'm going to start to Paint there. I'm, I'm so I'm painting in the light bits. I'm going to bring in some dark a little bit later on, and I can also uh, bring in some variety of greens as well. Let's just put some of that in there. I don't need this. This is a lot of this is going to be hidden by these trees in the foreground, so I don't need to get too concerned about that just at the moment. Um, Right. Um, mix up something darker. So I'll, I'll add some ultramarine blue to this. That was the blues I spoke of, the ready blue here yeah, to that. And maybe bring some in here. So, so we get a mixture of lights and darks appearing um, for our and um, that's ultramarine blue, a bit more uh, of that light red to it. Let's just pop in. Some colors here. These these are going to paint themselves to a large extent. And if you're dropping in some very strong uh, color to stuff that's already uh, wet, then it's going to sort of paint itself like that uh, a little bit. Uh, right. So we. Increase that a bit more. Let's just go back to a light color again and put some of that there. Stronger. Right. 
whilst this is still a little bit wet here, um, I, I'm going to move to the hills and then come on down here. So my hills, I will use try cobalt blue and a little bit of um, this orangey red, just a little bit like that. Now, is that going to be, I'll make it a bit more blue, I think, something like that. And uh, that's going to be my, these distant hills here. I've, I've, I've pretty well lost them here, these ones. Um, let's just make that a little bit darker. So everything's still quite wet. And down here, Remember I showed you in my practice painting, all this sort of soft greens and so forth. I'm, I'm going to um, pick up my lemon yellow and, and make something of that. Here, yeah. add a bit more lemon yellow to it. And these these will start painting themselves into each other here because uh, the all the water that's on the page, and uh, bring in some some redness here. I think so. Uh, what should I do? Try a bit some bit of raw sienna, and um, I don't know. Is that going to be is it going to be what I want? Something like that. Let's drop some, and, and, and some slightly darker bits. I'll use ultramarine blue to darken that a little bit. And make that red a little redder. Do red. Remember, this hair is going to be covered um, a lot by the, the trees. It's still going to be um, a backdrop. I could make this, I, I, I don't even think that that will show up at all. I've lost the hills there and... Uh, Mike, what so colour was added to the raw sienna, please? I added uh, a... I, my colour is Windsor red. Uh, it could be cadmium red or vermilion or something. I, I, was, I was just trying to break up a little bit the, um, uh, the, the, the greens that we've got here. And the more wet you do them, the more they bleed into each other and, and that, that should be fine there. So where have we got to? We put in a lot of the middle distance here. We, we can come back to it and we can add to it a little later on if we want to do that. Um, now I'm going to deal with uh, the building um, and uh, the tiles and the roofs and uh, the windows. Uh, oh, I, I think I'll... Um, I'll, I'll put in a bit of grass coming down here. Let's just go back to just uh, something like that.
Okay. Right, now I'm going to turn my attention to uh, the building, the roofs, um, and uh, the windows. Um, there's a door down here, which I think I'll pop in. Where's my photograph? Yeah, let's, let's stick a door in here. Um, remember, perspective says that it's going that way. The door of some kind. The door window there. Perspective says it's going that way. Okay, I'm going to continue using this little mop brush and create a sort of um, a rooftop uh, color. Now, th this, you're uh, going to have to simplify this an awful lot because. The photograph shows just millions of tiles and everything, but I, I can't, I really can't get bogged down in that. I, th I think that will make it uh, too heavy painting. So I, I will, I'll begin with, let's see if uh, this is going to work, uh, with raw sienna. I'll go back to raw sienna and um, try this lighter red. Whoa, that is. Far too violent, that red. Let's bring in a bit more raw sienna. That's, that's maybe getting better. A um, little bit of crimson. Okay, so I've got a, a, a colour like that, which I'm, I'm going to put on uh, this roof and this roof. And um, let's see. See how that goes. Not wet. That's a bit wet. So. What about that? So I want that. A little bit more red in. A little bit, I'm going to put a little bit of light red. It's a sort of slightly browny red. Just, I don't want it to be too fine. Yeah, that will do. Right, so. Now I can leave, if I show you my practice painting, I can leave little gaps in here, which sort of give the suggestion of light glinting off the roofs uh, here. I don't have to uh, paint the whole thing slavishly. So let's, uh, let's do that. Leave out the chimneys we've got here. They, they want to be treated slightly differently in a different colour. So I've got okay, and no reason why I shouldn't use the same colour here. Um, I don't maybe 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 not leave so many gaps for this. Uh, is that going to be dark enough? I think so. I can always make it darker. So there, and the um, th these chimney pots. I think I'll just add some water to. top of that so it looks a bit different I've left I've left these to 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 be white to stand out a little bit more um this this now is beginning to look quite white but that's fine I, that's what I wanted it to be I mean if I wanted to at the end and I wanted to bring some more yellow and I could sweep some yellow over it which is the advantage of using of course um translucent colors. So let, let's put some color now into uh, the windows. Uh, and here I'll move away a little bit. I'll, I'll go back to raw sienna, but I won't have so much red in it. So let's see if that will do. Some raw sienna here. Um, I'll add it. Uh, yeah, raw sienna. Let's just try that and, and bring that in. Now, 
it's got um the windows have got around them some sort of a mortar so if i if i work inside the windows of it say like that leaving a, a gap um oh shall i put another window in Mm. Yeah, we'll put another window in. I'll put another window in here. It it probably get lost anyway. When when you're um painting and you, if you want to come back and draw uh, uh, more in after you've started your painting, that's that's fine. No no worries there at all. You can do that just like that. So we've made some sort of little statement of the windows. Um, uh, right. I happen to know there's a wall here. Uh, uh, so I'm going to take what I've done and add something a little bit. I'm just moving around my palace and picked up something a little bit greyer and uh, and I'll put that in there. Uh, that's how it goes, isn't it? What do we say? Yeah, it, they're the stairs, so it's something like that. I mean, I, again, a lot of this is going to be lost. It's just um, it's something you might not be able to see terribly well in the photograph, but it doesn't matter. Um, I, I, there's a there's a wall that runs along there, and uh, okay, that's fine with that. Now, what other colours shall I put in down there for the moment? Um, I'm going to come back and put some shadow in, but I'm just waiting for things to dry a little bit. Let's uh, let's take let's take some of that colour that I put here. And let's let's just put a bit there because you can actually, as it happens, you can see through there. So if we just make that a bit muddier, just. So something like that it just reflects what's going on in the background and then the rest of it more or less gets covered in shadows doesn't it let's just uh, we'll deal with that in a moment we'll deal with those shadows in a moment okay um i'm leaving my figure out just for the moment uh, uh i'll put in uh, some drain pipes and guttering and let's make that slightly gray. So if I want to make a gray, I have a number of options. I, I could go for this color here, which is neutral tint, which is um, Payne's gray, is not a totally dissimilar color, but I just think that's going to be a bit flat uh, uh, and heavy, uh, whatever I do. Or I could mix a sort of gray color, but let me have a look at the, the actually the, um, the drain pipes are red, are, are brown, and so I, I will go for a grey. I'm going to mix a grey. Simple to mix a grey. Let's take a, let's take a, a blue, and add some sort of red. That's gone. Let's add a bit more blue. Uh, do we need to have any yellow in that? That's probably going to do. Let's so let's just. I keep this quite light because um, we can add some dark bits to it and and also you don't need to paint it all you can lost and found just one or two little bits uh, just in there which might help when we're trying to get some uh, lighter and the drain uh, the down pipes um, they're, they're browner aren't they so let's just add a a brown I've, I've used a light brown there we could use a burnt um, sienna there let's just see if we can uh, drop drain pipe down there and put one there they're going to have little bits of shadows behind them to make them um, come alive a little bit more okay All right uh, Anything else? Um, 
right. Okay, what are we doing up here? Do I let's um there's, a, there's some sort of a roadway here. Um I, I, I'm going to make I'm going to bring up make that slightly um slightly grey. So again very light grey, just something like that. Okay, I'll do for that. And um ah, I added these doors and I haven't given them any colour. So let's give the doors some colour. Go back to what I had here. Um that needs to be a bit stronger. A bit more browny, maybe the doors. And we've got another window. I use some sort of raw sienna like that on there. Okay. So we're moving around, just dropping in various colours. Now, do we, uh, uh, at what stage do I do something with all these sort of bushes here? Shall I do those now or um, later? I should think about that. So I'm quite pleased at the moment because this figure is standing out on its own. I. I I want to make sure, because it will be mostly in shadow, I want to make sure it stands silhouetted against this building in order to make, make the figure stand out. So I'm, I'm going to be careful about not putting too much foliage and stuff that's going to clutter my figure up uh, at this stage. But um, I could... Uh, Okay, I'll, I'll put some of these bushes in. So I'm going to use my rigger for this. And um, I'm going to put in the lighter colours first and add some dark to them. And then maybe at the end, come in and put the, the trunks, the, the uh, stems out. So th these sorts of things I'm talking about here, so, some of which are, have got shadow on them. Um, uh, and some of them which are in light. So I'm going to use my rigger and uh, you'll see I, I will use it in a way where it's not necessarily just the point of it. Let's let's pick up some colours. What have I got sludging around in here? Um, I'll go back to my sap green and that's much too bright. So um, what happens if I bring a bit of a, a darker yellow into it? What am I getting there? I'm getting something which might be quite interesting. So let's let's just try out um, things. Uh, I, I you don't need to draw this in, but I'm just going to draw you what what I have in mind here. So um, I've got a, uh, I, I've got. Let's just put a. Something here, something down there, maybe um, a few bushes going here. And I remember I don't want to crowd out my, my figure, so let's let's put something there and and then we might put something here. We can always come back and do it. So we can at least begin uh, be begin with this journey. So I'm going to uh, Look at this, this one here, and using my rigger brush on its side as much as I can, I'm going to put in the light bits there, and um, and whilst it's still wet, mix up a, a shadow color. Let's, let's take some cobalt blue and some light red or burnt sienna or something like that. Not too brown, some a bit more blue. Uh, and, um, and I said that some of it was in shadow and some of it was catching the light. So
something like that. Uh, and <clears throat> it, the, the, the paint is sort of painting itself in, uh, leaving some areas light. And I'm, I'm going to do that with other branches, uh, the bushes that we see here. Um, I'll come back later on and see what, what I need to do and how much stronger I need to make them right at the end. But let, let, let's at least establish uh, some of these things here. So I've got sort of green I've mixed up with sap green. If you don't have sap green, you could use a middle yellow and a cobalt or something like that. Um, I, I'm going to just add a darker yellow to that and say, uh, put, make that a bush. You can see already we're covering up various things. So make that a, a bush there. Let's um, put a bush there. We can add bushes later on. And then I'll go back to this shadow that I uh, I mixed up earlier and uh, add and, and go to the shadow area and um, they may be good enough or we might want to come back and just do something to them. Let's just put a, a suggestion. Right, that's that's a few in there. More. Um, don't forget, we're going to have lots of leaves coming over here, so you can work your way around that. I, I think I'll, I'll, um, I'll put something here, but I'll make it um, not green. It's sort of a slightly brown. So let's just mix up something slightly lighter and brown and. Uh, I think a lot of it might be in shadow anyway. It gets me started on a few things that are going here. Um, there are shadows being cast by all sorts of things in a moment. And that's what I'm going to go for now, the shadows. Now I'm going to use Uh, I'm going to mix up a, a shadow colour, which in some instances I, um, I, I, I can lighten by adding water to it, or some instances I can darken by adding more brown to it or more blue to it or something like that. Um, but, but for this painting, I think I'll use a a not dissimilar shadow for uh, a lot of uh, the painting. Now, th these are, th the shadows may well be emphasized later on in the last stage of the painting, but the, the bulk of the shadow is going to be done now. And I think I'll use this smaller mop brush again. And, um, Uh, I, I might add, I might do some something shadow wise here. Um, I'm not going to do anything on the trees, on the building, the cast shadows by the trees that we're going to be put in here. The, this is a sort of lip, at least I'm treating it as a lip, which drops down slightly uh, here to uh, the, the garden. I, I can't remember whether it, I think it is, a, a, yeah, it must be some sort of a patio. It must be a lip there. So so you, you can see that there are shadows cast out across the grass as well, across here and underneath. Yes, it's, a, it's a driveway that sort of... Um... I, I think it's standing proud, isn't it, of the... Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think so. I think so, yeah. Right, so... Um, I'm going to use cobalt blue for this. Um, I, I can go back and remix my colours as many times as I like, so I don't have to have a big bucket load of it. And I'll add some, I, I've got light red here, 
You could add um, burnt sienna uh, to it. Um, uh, either of those would do, but I'm just going to use this light red and bring it. Now, if you do, as I've done there, and put too much in, it goes quite brown. So let's bring some blue back in. Uh, I, I'd like the shadows to be blue and to be relatively cool as well. Here we go. The blue will make them cool. So let's see. Let's see how that goes. I, I'll worry about this bit later. I'm not quite sure what to do there. So. Um, A shadow here and a shadow under that lip. And the shadow cast a little bit. We're talking about where the sun was going, so that, that's kind of casts that little shadow there and a little bit on this thing at the top. Give that a bit of definition at this stage. Have a look at this bit of the one. We'll take a, a shadow under here, under that bit of roof, and let's put some shadow in here. Now the the light is going into this little alleyway, this little, um, uh, what do you call it, this, this, this bit here, um, uh, oh, I don't know what it's called, but the, the light goes through these arches and hits the wall at the back, so let's just um, do that and we can work our way around um, the leaves. Right, if we need to do any more to that, we, we can do that and come back in a while. Uh, right, uh, under, under this guttering, we can take the shadow just underneath the guttering. There's the lights coming down there. Let's just take it cast down onto the wall. It's got a couple of interesting little gaps in the photograph, which is, uh, I think I might just make use of there. There, that's the wall. Let's bring a little bit of shadowing just to the right hand side of the downpipe. and then the windows the lights coming this way so um you, you can treat these windows however you like uh, i think i will um i will i don't know if i need to put any detail in them that so i can make this one i think i'll make that one a bit darker and then uh, this is if you if you're sort of painting it like that, then then you're giving a suggestion of um, the direction of the sunlight. Oh, 
can see whether we need to do any more to that, but I'll put some. I talked about the thing that surrounds the windows. I'm not quite sure what to do about this, but I'll put some shadow on, under them anyway. And that just it all gives the impression of it being. Sunlit, okay. Um, this doorway. And this window, yeah. Right, I'm going to put the shadow in from these trees. The trees are going to come later on, but I'll put the shadow in these trees. It might be useful to have a little bit of shadow mixed up here, uh, just, just so that we cover it. Um, I'll have it falling across. Uh, that coming to coming across that side of the building. Wh where the shadow dis disperses in the distance, you, you can always just add a little bit more water uh, to it, or I'm just touching it out a little bit with my finger, just just to soften it a little bit here. And we've got yeah, that's um, right. I'm going to mix a little bit more shadow because I'm running out of it. So I use cobalt blue and a little bit of light red or burnt sienna. Is that going to be, yeah, that's about right. And <laughs> take some of this shadow now. Um, where do I want it? It's going to go. Uh, for, we, we, this shadow is reflecting lots of branches and so forth, so we can break it up a little bit and, and have it slightly mottled as well. It, um, let's take it right out here. And So whilst it's still a little bit wet, and particularly on this sort of patio bit here, I'm just going to add a little bit more, uh, just touch in some stronger paint, just a little bit of the brown that I use, just so that we, uh, it, it isn't always exactly the same. And go back to my shadow, um, I'm going to bring it up here. A bit more blue to that. Anything you do is going to work really because it's just the, the shadow that's been cast by the trees. Let's make that a little bit stronger in one or two places. Blue. Stronger, stronger. So 
I'm using paint with almost no um, water in it, so just one or two places. Now, where have we got to? I'm going to do the trees all in one go at the end, I think. Um, and bring in some accents. I'll do this figure as well at the end. I do little details like fence and gates or any other little bits and pieces that you want to put in. Uh, at the end. I don't think I can see me going any further forward at the moment and so that that for me is the end of the third session. Step on that one Lois. When I spoke about this painting at the start I said that you know this I saw very much as the the white building and everything the focal point and it was emphasized with and framed with uh, these uh, trees on the side. Um, this is this is a a well known technique that artists use. If if you know the work of Claude Lorraine, um, he he always framed his paintings with trees on one side and an old building on the other side. <laughs> you can always tell one of his paintings uh, from hundreds of years ago. But but the, the that sort of frame within a frame, I, I I thought was quite nice. We've yet to do that, so let, let's just see what impact that has are on the painting. Now, I'm not, I, I don't know whether I'm going to do anything to these trees. I'm going to leave them, I think, and, and see see how they, they work. Um, uh, most of the colors I'm going to put on are going to be dark colors, I would say. Um, whether I'll need to bring in any whites, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm conscious that I want this figure to have some dapper light, a bit of dapper light. I mean, when you paint, as I think many of you know, um, uh, I, I certainly always try and get out of the light to paint. If I'm painting light, I'll try and go somewhere in the shadow because not only can you get very hot, but also uh, the, the glare of the paper and everything is quite difficult. So you can understand why this person gun stood here in amongst the uh, shadows, but given that we've got dapper light going on around here, then then I think uh, we, we might do some dapper light, but I, I'll come to that figure uh, in a moment. I think I'll, I'll leave that figure, if not to the end, close to the end. So I'm going to start off with adding accents or um, details, accents is probably a better word for it, to, to some of what's going on in the, in the building, uh, particularly where the shadows are, um, and giving them and giving the, the, them a little bit more body. So, for this one, I, I, for this one, for a bit, I'll use my rigger, and um, I'm going to mix up a a shadow color, but make it darker. So, um, I, I think let's try ultramarine blue, and. Um, Ultramarine blue, and I could use burnt umber or burnt sienna. We'll, we'll, we'll try burnt sienna. And I'm, I'm trying to get something pretty dark and sludgy. Let's just see how we're going. That's quite blue, add a bit more red. Now it's at this point when I'm trying to get something really dark and I'm not sure I need it yet, that I'm, I, I might bring into play the neutral tint that uh, I have up here. It, I, I don't often use it on its own, but I do use it added to other colors. I don't know whether I need it just yet. Let's see how we get on with that. So that's quite a, quite a thick, um, color it's quite blue let's see if that's going to do the trick and 
and if you look at your photographs, uh, there are little bits of details that um, that you might uh, want to. Let's let's put, for instance, let's just that's something there um, where this overhangs. You could just 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 put a little little bit of um, emphasis to the shadow under that and. Uh, we'll, we'll do the same. I've sort of lost it a little bit here to, to that. Um, similarly, and um, I might just put a bit of emphasis there. So these are tiny little bits, but hopefully, when all added up together, they'll give the feeling of. The, the, the strong light. Now, I want to do something with the uh, tiles. I, I showed you my practice painting that I did here and how I, I very mimic, uh, minimally um, made some sort of suggestion about the tiles. So I'm, I'm going to do the same again. I'll, I'll continue using uh, my rigger and uh, Let's just see if we can you can see I'm not I'm trying not to necessarily add every uh, every bit of tiling that I can see here. Let's um, All right, made a few marks there. Let's take this under let's, yeah, just a little bit, an accent, just a touch here. I, again, I mentioned before, and I'm sure many of you know this lost and found business. I want to put a dark line under there, but it tends to work better if you if you break that line up a little bit rather than just necessarily have it all one long line. So just a little bit in there. Um, I'm not quite sure what to do with this uh, for a moment. Let's, um, let's, let's come back to that. Uh, I'll, I'll make this a bit darker. Let's see if that's going to do the job and put something. There, a little bit. A bit down there. So I think the best word to describe this is sort of accents. A little bit of. Let's do something with these windows. Just accents. Just picked up uh, a little bit of red or something, added that to it, and I'll put in some of these. Um, things on the windows.
Okay. Right, I feel I need to, I must do something with what's going on in, in this. Um, I asked you earlier, uh, Lois, I don't know if you heard me. I'm just trying to think, well, what's that little bit of the building called? Um, the cloisters. What, what is it? The lodger. Cloisters, is it not cloisters? Well, cloister, yes, that sounds a good one. The cloisters loggia? are the ones on the inside. Yeah, so this is a loggia, is it? Yeah. Okay, that's good. Um, right, let's put in some. Uh, I'm just trying to add something to inside here. Uh, so it's um, it's not just quite as fat as it is. Uh, This is a bit where you can see through. So, um, and the rest are shadows. It's a bit too dark. Let's get that going. Right, I think I want to overcook that. That'll do. And um, right, I'll, I'll revisit these trees, um, and then I'll do the, the, these bushes, and then I'll do the trees. So let's see what we can do with those trees. Do I want to add anything more to them? Throw a shadow down there, but I, I've, I've just added some water to the um, uh, the darkness I've got here because I I didn't want it to be as dark as the rest of us. Just put some of this in. Um, I'm going to make it darker still and add a little bit of neutral tint and. Um, this bush. So I'm deciding going around the bushes which bits want to be in shadow, uh, which bits don't. Um, okay. I'll paint the figure now and then I'll do the trees. I'm going to do the trees at the end because that sort of obliterates everything. So let's have a look at the figures. Um, I can use my white paint to add the, the little bits of um, dapple light on the figure, but I'm going to try and do it as much as I can uh, without um, uh, using the paint. So if we um, Uh, let's give this person a, a light pinky top. Find something that will do. And uh, she's, I don't know if it's a she who is mostly in the shade. Bit of double light there. And some dark trousers. Anything you like, really. Let's get some burnt umber. Now, it should be wearing shorts of some kind, so let's pick up a 
little bit of burnt sienna or something and uh, the less detail we can put in the more we'll get away with that okay let's go back and make some sort of shorts what do you want them to be and I want to make that, oh, look, look uh, the thing they're working on. And I make the person a bit darker, it stands out. Use some of this dark and drop it in. Yeah. And I'll give her an easel, him an easel indeterminate sex this person Right, I'm now going to be on the trees and, and see. Let's see where we go from there. Now, for the trees, I'm going to use this sword brush. Um, and um, let's have a look at what, what's going on here. Uh, this what, tree on the right, um, it's quite dark, it's, it's overhanging a bit, which will tie in with some of these shadows we've put in here. Uh, it's overhanging um, and it's in the foreground. It's just sort of coming into the, 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 the picture a little bit, hence all these shadows, I think. Uh, these two trees are sitting on the edge of this driveway that I was talked about here. So um, they're set back just a little bit. This this brush um, is going to give me uh, all sorts of um, uh, shapes that I couldn't sort of sit down and design myself. So let me show you my practice painting here. Um, this was all done with with this brush. I'm I want to bring in some colour. I, I, I want there to be some green in here. So I'm, I'm nowhere am I going to use black in this one although I might use some of my black added to it so I'm going to mix up a, a dark green here I'm going to bring in some light greens at the top here and then lose them in the shadow and, 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 and hope that they will work and once I've done that I can then see how the rest of the, the picture is going to follow so the color I want for this um, is um, I won't use my my go-to sap green and I, I'll mix, I, I, I think I'll, I'll, I'll put in some lights here. So let, let's, let's get um, ultramarine blue and um, I'll, I'll try the middle yellow. It's often a case of just trying and seeing that we've got something there. Um, so I've used ultramarine blue and beryllium or cadmium yellow. Let's just add a bit more of that. And uh, and put some of that here. Looking at my photograph, a lot of this will get lost, but if we can keep some of it and 
just suggesting that there is some light touching some parts of the tree. Just take that up a little bit as well. You can have hours of fun doing this sort of thing because um, you don't necessarily go wrong with them. So we leave that for a little bit. Let's move over here and um, go back with my ultramarine blue. I'm probably going to add something a little bit red into this. So um, I can't remember what happens if I put lemon yellow into that. Let's try some lemon yellow. Okay, that's quite nice and strong here. Um, a bit more lemon yellow, a bit more ultramarine blue. And um, where are we going to go? Let's uh, just a touch of light red, something just to turn it down just a little bit. And then we've got. Uh, that's why these brushes are so good, because you can make these marks, um, which, which, which quite you, you can make with lots of other brushes. This, this is a hate brush that I use, which is quite good for making marks like this. Um, and you can use any brush, really, if, if you can manipulate it in such a way. But this one holds, holds a lot of um, water. Let's see how far am I going to take that down. And uh, hopefully some of that green is going to show through. You can see what I mean by don't worry too much what you painted under it because you can paint over it now. Um, and uh, right, and I'm going to make that darker now. So bring in some more ultramarine blue. Move out of the way a bit. Mike, could you just uh, revise how you make sap green if you haven't got sap green? Uh, with the middle, I you can get something pretty closer with the middle yellow, like cadmium yellow or aurelian, and cobalt blue. Okay, so I've I've mixed up a colour which isn't vastly different from that, but I want to make it darker, so I'll add a bit more. Um, of something brown, like a uh, light red or something. And I'm going to add a little bit of neutral tint. So let's see how we go with this. Now it's clearly darker. Now this is a tree that's um, just off the picture a wee bit. Uh, how far can I get down here? Right, amazingly, I've run out of paint, so let's mix it up again. Ultramarine blue I was using. Lemon yellow. Whoops, that's gone far too yellow. So let's add a bit of something like light red to that. And neutral tint. Well, look how dark are we going? Yeah, it's probably getting about right. So I, I do want some of the green to to sh to show up, but it is it's it, it's quite dark, um, and there's little gaps that you can see through, of course, as you you can see here. But um, now, for, whilst this is still wet, if I wanted to beef up some bit and make it a bit darker, I can go straight to my neutral tint and just add that into one or two areas. That's something I'm probably going to be doing over here a bit more. So I think I think we'll call that a day. And then over here, well, <clears throat> why don't we sort of put a tree trunk in and then see where we go from there. I'll, I'll, some something like burnt umber and ultramarine blue. And we'll come back to that in a moment. So we're gonna take, um, we're gonna take our tree trunk up here. 
where it's going to be. Come back to that. So that's going to be there. So be brave. Use strong colours. Um, and um, I'm going to bring that tree in here. These two trees. And then from that, let's go go back to this colour. I think I'll add um, let's add some more yellow, just so it's not quite so dark. Try the other yellow as well. Okay, something like that. And then we're going to right. So what you can do with uh, this brush is. You, you can use it um, on its sides, um, points, get, get some pretty weird, now that wants to be a bit darker, get some pretty weird um, marks there, which, which you couldn't possibly achieve um, ju just by sitting down and trying to design these marks. They're, they're, they're out of control marks in a sense. And also um, what's quite good is that we can um, get some very fine lines. So I'm going to make this quite dark. And so we've got these sorts of lines which um, if you look at the photograph, you can see that coming off. Some, some of them are lighter than others. And for me, the trees are going right up out of the picture. So I think that's probably quite useful to, to do that. I hope you agree that this is lots of fun. You can enjoy yourself doing this, totally painting over everything you've done. <laughs> I think these tree trunks could be a bit thicker. Let's get something dark and sludgy. So lots of ultramarine blue. Um, and probably bring in some more neutral tint and uh, Can you give us the name of the brush again, please, Mike? It's a, it's a sword. They're called swords. Some people call them daggers. Um, and uh, you can sort of see the shape of it, a bit like a sort of dagger, isn't it? Um, but a really useful brush. Uh, they're used um, by sign writers because they can get some really fine lines with them. Um, uh, sort of very competent sign writers will use them in preference to something like a rigger. But so you can control them, but they they can be really out of the control. So I, I think I want to get some more foliage over here. Now, whilst some of this is foliage is wet, uh, again, if you wanted to um, make it darker, you can just drop some um, some uh, some darker colours into it, especially if they are stronger colours, not and, and not too, too wet. Otherwise, you're going to get blossoms and things like that. Let's just bring in some some more dark here. 
and and add some neutral tint to that. I'll show you what I mean there. Just bring it a little bit in. You can see that the atmospheric mountains in the background and all that sort of stuff are, are being hidden, but that's you know it's giving you the the feeling of um, the light and the dark. Uh, I think I'll do a bit more with the bushes in a moment, but um, so it's Right, um, we should be able to wind this up in the next five minutes and then we're done. Uh, but it just... If you put something dark next to something light, uh, it will make that, 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 that was light appear. Um, so if I do something there, it'll make the bits I put in light first. So I think um, I'm almost there, and I, I want to pick up the dark here. So I go to one of my browns, my light brown or something like that, and let's start putting uh, some interesting little marks. So stick a fence in here, maybe. Um, is the fence. And um, I'm going around the painting, just seeing if I can add one or two accents to things. Um, A little bit of a few things lying around on the lawn, maybe. If you put them in, you can um, add a bit of shadow down one side just to bring them in keeping with everything else. Let's um, make this a bit, a bit more shadow on that. And Yeah, hopefully there's some little dappled light on that, but um, I can I can always touch in a bit of white afterwards if I want to. Just make this drawing board a bit darker against the silhouette there so it stands out a wee bit more. There we are. Um, now, what I normally do with these is um, at the end of this session, I then have a cup of tea or something and then come and look at the painting. If I need to do anything to it, I, I will. Um, and then I photograph it and hand it into the, the cluster gallery. Uh, I'll make a few comments and, and I really look forward to seeing 
what everybody else has done. And I'm really happy just to make, I, I mean, I'm, I, I'm not saying what I'm doing is uh, a critique um, in any way. Let's just put a something here, just helping to suggest that it's some sort of bush and it's delineating This, this is a sort of um, paved area. Right, when I come back to it, whether I want to do anything more to it there, I don't know, but you can spend so long in a painting, you you can't see what you're doing. So go go away from it. Um, walk, take a walk or have a break uh, and um, and then come back and I, I might come back and do something on these bushes, I, I think uh, a little later on. But, but um, that, Lois, is where I've got to with the painting.